Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Rudy's Rant, powered by Come On Now, the podcast. I am your host, Rudy Rodriguez Shomont, and I got a rant to get into. But before I jump in, thank you so much for your continued support of this channel. Greatly appreciate you. Be sure to like, subscribe, follow, become a member. We have a membership live on Tuesday night at 9 p.m. I just realized I got an event Tuesday night, so I'm probably going to have to push it back to about 10.30 on Tuesday night, and I will put that in the community room. But yeah, it's gonna probably, probably have to be about 10.30 because I have a gala that I have to attend to for my, for my day-to-day job. <clears throat> so I apologize for that in advance. But I was really pissed off yesterday, and I'm still pissed off right now about the way Miami blew it versus Syracuse. But I've had a chance to breathe, and I'm still pissed off. And I'm still highly disappointed because I just watched Mario Cristobal and his completely inept coaching staff waste the season of the greatest quarterback Miami has ever had at the University of Miami. Cam Ward just had the best season ever at the University of Miami. Miami's never had a quarterback play like Cam Ward has played this year. And it's utterly disappointing to see an opportunity go by the wayside potentially because of coaching, because of lack of preparation, because of decision-making. Now, I stand by what I said. I said yesterday I had actually no issue with Mario Cristobal deciding to kick a field goal with four minutes to go. Had no issue with it. And I still have no issue with it. And I'm going to tell you why I have no issue with it. I have no issue with it because Miami on fourth down plays of late has not exactly been successful. In two games, well, in on two separate situations against Georgia Tech, Mario Cristobal decided to go for it rather than take a field goal. And he got crucified for it. He did it before the first half ended on a fourth and short, and the play they ran was pathetic. And you normally see them struggle in fourth down when they are... closer to the goal line because it doesn't give Cam Ward the space to have receivers running deep routes. So the underneath stuff might be covered better because of the fact that you can't, the field has been, has been shrunk because you're at the 10, 15 yard line. So I watched them have two of those plays stopped by Georgia tech. The second one in which it was fourth and 16 and rather than kick a field goal, he went for it. And that basically cost Miami the game. If they kick field goals in both those situations, Miami's leading 29-28. And if they go on for an extra point rather than going for two, they're up 30-28 to with the ball and a chance to run the clock out. Situations that happen in the second quarter and the third quarter have an impact on the fourth quarter. In this situation, Miami would have had a chance to win the game if it could make one defensive stop. And before you tell me, well, it hadn't stopped anybody the whole game. You're right, they hadn't. And I can show you multiple games in which Miami hadn't stopped anybody the whole game. And then when they needed to make that stop, they made that stop. They made that stop versus Virginia Tech. They made that stop versus Cal. They made that stop actually at Georgia Tech as well. They couldn't stop Georgia Tech the whole game. They they couldn't stop them. Georgia Tech ran the ball down their throats. But when Miami needed to make a stop to get the ball back, to give Cam Ward a chance to win the game, they did that. They did it. Why would this but possibility not be in existence when you know Syracuse is going to run the ball. 
you know Syracuse will run the ball. Even though they're a passing team, they're going to run the ball because they're going to want to make Miami burn their timeouts and eat up as much clock as possible. Either you're going to burn the timeouts, and they're in their mind saying, we get one first down. This game's a wrap. They got three first downs running the ball every single time. Add in the offsides penalty, which gave them a first down by Moulton. And there's your ball game. So I understand the the irritation of not going for it and not giving Cam Ward the ball. I get it. I, I genuinely get it. <clears throat> and I think there's a communication issue that exists within this team that's existed all year. But it's not such a far-fetched thing to expect that your defense, your run defense, can hold up. And unfortunately, they did not. Syracuse, in this game, ran the ball. They ran the ball 27 times. <clears throat> they ran it 27 times. They ran the ball eight times in the last four minutes. That's what happened. They ran the ball eight times the last four minutes. Eight of their carries, well, six of them, because the last two were kneel downs. So six of their, six of their, so 20, 27, 21 of their carries came before the before this final drive. They had 25% of their carries on the final drive. This is a fact. And up until until that point, Miami had largely stopped the run. At that point, at that point, I'm going to tabulate it all here. 11 yards, 4 yards, 7 yards. That's 15, 22, 28 offsides. 28. 39 yards. Six carries for 39 yards by a team that up until that point had 21 carries for like 60, for like 60, 60 yards. Miami had held these guys to three yards a carry. The whole game <clears throat> was 32 carries because you include the sacks of, of McCord. But if I remove the McCord plays, which was five for negative 14, they're 27 for 88. That is that's 3.26 yards per carry. Miami's defense against the run was really good. That's why Syracuse throws so damn much. Because until that point, 88 minus 39, they had 21 carries for 49 yards, 2.33 per carry. So I understand your, your thought process of, they, ain't, they can't stop them. But knowing Syracuse is going to run the ball, I have no problem with that. You had a, They were stopping them 2.33 yards per carry until that final drive. I, 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 that's what I'm trying to understand why people are so upset about that decision. I understand it, but I also know in my brain that if Cam Ward does not complete a pass on fourth and goal from the 10, the same people saying that Crystal Ball's a moron for not going for it would have said he was a moron for going for it. So he would never, he would, he's in a no win situation here. If you want to call him a coward, that's fine. I think he's had a lot of cowardly calls this year. I think he's <clears throat> really blown a lot of things this year. The Georgia Tech game, 
obviously was one that I saw blown one after blown. And the timeouts that he uses or doesn't use, just shit. But I will sit, but hell, the fact that a third string running back's in the game with eight and a half minutes to go is preposterous. Damian Martinez is running down their throats, and you have Jordan Lyle in the game. In fact, running on a third down play that we needed a first down on. He got the first down. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> this cough is still killing me. But I'm trying to, un but, but so, like, those are things that bother me. The DBs, you have backup defensive backs. These guys you have in the game suck. Put someone else in. There's nothing wrong with taking the guy out because he's stinking it up. There's nothing wrong with playing a zone rather than playing man the whole fucking game. But they play man and play man and play man. Daryl Porter stinks. OJ Frederic, I don't know how people think this guy is an all-American freshman. He stinks. Damari Brown barely played all year because he got hurt. The one play I saw that I remember him on, he got burnt. Jaden Harris, their safety, is a horrendous tackler. Safeties being bad tacklers is a bad thing. <clears throat> their, their DBs are atrocious, which makes me look think that they're completely unprepared when they look like that against Kyle McCord, who I think is a very good quarterback. If Kyle McCord was the quarterback at Ohio State right now, Ohio State's undefeated. And Ohio State's likely the favorite to win the national championship. The way they treated that dude at Ohio State, I think you got a good idea of how good he is. Ooh, he's the number one passer in the country this year. Number one. He's the only guy ahead of Cam Ward in passing. He threw for 380 yards. This guy has games this year where he lit it up. Game long. He has a game where he threw for 470, 323, 392, 280, 321, 346, 355, 385, 339, 381. This guy threw for 300 yards in every game except one. And you don't think they're going to throw the ball 50 fucking times? They're going to throw the fucking ball. And yet... Our DBs looked like they weren't ready for that because our team is always grossly unprepared defensively. Now, there are plays that happen in this game that killed Miami. This Restrepo fumble killed Miami. It killed Miami. Pass interference is on their DBs. Killed them. It was horrible. It, 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 it just it was bad. <laughs> Watching Daryl Porter get ragdolled for a touchdown where all he has to do is be in the way. Stay standing. You knock the ball away. They kick a field goal. Frederic, same thing. They kick a field goal. But no, instead you grab this jersey and pull them down. When you're standing right next to him. It's just bad. It's just bad across the board. <clears throat> but with all that said, Miami loses 42 to 38 to a 9 and 3 Syracuse team. The ACC has multiple good teams. This attitude that the ACC is some trash can conference is ridiculous. You got Duke, who's nine and three. Duke went nine and three. Miami beat Duke by 22 points. Louisville went eight and four. Miami scored 52 points at Louisville. Louisville's losses, all four of them are by one score. I want my seven points or less. Louisville's a good team. Did they have a bad loss for Stanford? Absolutely. But they're a good team. How are they not ranked ahead of a team from the freaking American Conference that doesn't have a win over anybody? How is Syracuse not ranked? Well, they're ranked now. <clears throat> but how are they not ranked? They beat UNLV. UNLV is ranked. They beat UNLV at UNLV, and you own UNLV's rank. But UNLV's two losses are Syracuse and Boise State. And UNLV has played nobody else on their schedule. 
Georgia Tech finished seven and five. Yes, they had an injury. Haynes King being out cost them dearly versus Virginia Tech, Notre Dame, where they had no offense, where their offense was just brutal. They lost to Louisville 31-19. Again, Miami beat Louisville. Let's, re let's remind you, Miami beat Louisville. <clears throat> and they lost to Syracuse by three. And they lost to Georgia by two. In a game, they were up 17-0 and 27-13 with seven minutes to go. And it took some absolutely brutal calls by the officials to get Georgia to win that game. There was a clear fumble inside the five-yard line that they had for review, and they still didn't overturn it, which gave Georgia a touchdown. There was a pass interference on fourth down they called on Georgia Tech. That wasn't pass interference. That gave Georgia a touchdown. <clears throat> and finally, there was the fumble with uh, three minutes to go on Haynes King, where it was a clear targeting penalty. They didn't even look at it. The man's helmet was straight down, crown hit dude square in the chin, right on his face mask, and he fumbles. That's a targeting penalty. Three brutal calls that cost Georgia Tech three touchdowns. Georgia Tech's a good team. Seven and five or not, they're a good team. And they missed their quarterback in two games. They're starting QB for two games. They missed him. So you have to look at situations and how they play out. Miami beat Florida by 24 in Gainesville. And all I get to hear about is how, all I get to hear about is how, you know, look at this, Florida's beating all these teams in the SEC now. Miami beat them by 24 in their home building with their actual first-string quarterback. Graham Mertz. Blew him out. Blew him out. <clears throat> and Florida came back and ended up beating LSU, Ole Miss. I believe it was Ole Miss. And um, who was the third one? <clears throat> LSU, Ole Miss. Yeah, those are the those are the two. They beat LSU, Ole Miss back to back, and then they beat Florida State. Florida State was awful this year. The Georgia game, they were tied 2020 with seven minutes left with their third string quarterback. So I want you to understand the Georgia dy dynamic here of how good Georgia is. Georgia's not that good. Georgia beats Kentucky 13-12. Florida beat them 48-20. Like Miami beat Florida worse than anybody on that schedule except for Texas. But the game against Texas was in Texas. We played in Gainesville. Yeah, we. I'm a Hurricane fan. Miami went to Gainesville for a game that Florida was preparing for all summer. And we, and we as in Miami, Miami didn't know what it had. Miami didn't know how good Cam Ward was. Miami had no idea how good Cam Ward could be. You didn't realize you had a Lamborghini. You thought you had a, a good Infinity or a Lexus. But you found out you had a Lambo in your park in your in your in your garage with him. He's that good. <clears throat> but this conversation about the playoff, it sucks because Miami's absolutely better than Clemson. Everyone knows it. And SMU is going to dog walk Clemson. Would Miami have beaten SMU? I have no idea. I would have thought it would have been a, a game in the 40s or 50s because these teams have just ri ridiculously good offenses. And if you didn't know, Clemson, SMU's entire offense is based on Miami. Miami players are all over that SMU team. Miami's former offensive coordinator is the head coach of SMU. And don't be surprised. That if and when Mario Cristobal gets fired, that the first phone call isn't to Rhett Lashley to bring him back to Miami. Because Rhett Lashley's a hell of a football coach. But when you look at the SEC and you see these teams that are being discussed 
as a playoff team with three losses. <clears throat> it's utterly ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Georgia gets the, the gift of being blown out by Ole Miss. Blown out, folks. Like, Miami didn't get blown out by anybody. They got beat by four and by five. Ole Miss beat the brakes off of Georgia, 28-10, and it should have been worse. They lost to Bama by seven. Again, they were down by 30 in. They get they squeak by Kentucky 13-12. They squeak by Florida. Again, that's tied with seven minutes left. They they get the gift of the officials against Georgia Tech. Like they've gotten gift after gift after gift. Their one real win was Clemson to start the season. And that game was 6-3 at halftime, I think. Something like that. 6-0 at halftime. The game was, yeah, 6-0 at the half. They ended up blowing them out, but it was 6-0 at halftime. So they get the gift of all these games. And they do have them win at Texas. And Texas hadn't beat anybody this year. Texas has a win over Texas A&M as their best win. They had a three-point game versus Vanderbilt. They beat a bad Oklahoma team. And they beat Texas A&M the other day by 10, yesterday by 10. Or, or Friday, whatever day that was. Who am I 10? 17-7. Like, there's no elite victories in that, in that schedule. They beat Michigan when Michigan was ranked 10th. But we know what Michigan got. They got nothing. Except for when over Ohio State. So this is the thing. You, you look at these, these SEC squads, and they get the benefit of that all the time. All the time. Is it Miami's fault that these pollsters don't respect the ACC? Because that's where this all starts from. It starts from an opening poll that literally puts every fucking SEC team in the top 25. And a the ACC has nothing. The Big 12 has nothing. It's an SEC Big Ten poll with a couple of teams sprinkled in here and there. Based on what? Because they haven't played on the field. Alabama loses to Oklahoma by 21 points. 24 to 3. A 6-6, six and six, or at the time, a 5-5 five and five OU team. Get blown out. Blown out. They lose to Vanderbilt, a team they haven't lost to in decades. <clears throat> a team <clears throat> in which they gave up more points in the first half than Vanderbilt had ever scored total against Nick Saban teams. But Alabama continues to get preferential treatment. And they lost to Tennessee. But the, the Oklahoma game that they lost 24 to 3, where Jalen Milrow was 11 for 26 for 164 and three interceptions, and Oklahoma's QB threw for nine, sorry, 68 yards. Threw for 68 yards and beat him 24 to 3. Alabama had 234 yards in that game. Miami hasn't had a game this year with less than 400 yards. Not one. But Alabama gets to get away with having a trash can offense. Remember how FSU didn't make the, the, the four-team playoff last year? Look, if this was a four-team playoff, you'd have enough headaches in, 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 in itself, and no, Miami would have no shot, none at all. But remember how FSU was let was escorted out of the playoff last year? It was because their quarterback got hurt. But FSU's defense was elite, one of the best in the country. And they were winning games with their defense. And people will say, oh, when they played Georgia, they got crushed. Yeah, they were missing like 17 players. They were missing everybody. Everyone, everyone decided not to play. But FSU should have been in that Final Four. Should have been ranked third. They earned it. They were undefeated. They beat everybody. And yet they get screwed because there's an SEC bias that exists. 
and they decided, oh, the quarterback's not there, so, well, they're not going to go. Well, now this year, the conversation is Miami, and Miami's defense sucks. But you know what Miami's got? If not the, be if not the best QB in the country, one of the top two. The other being Shador Sanders. So if he's not the best in the country, he's one, one of the top two. I think he's the best in the country. I think what he's done in Miami this year has been amazing. He's been amazing. He's made good receivers great. He's turned a bunch of guys who you had no idea what they were, and now you know that probably all – they're going to lose four wide receivers, and probably all of them are going to be, from, be, be drafted. Xavier Restrepo is a star. Fumble yesterday, whatever. Restrepo is a great wide receiver. He's a draft pick. He's a day two draft pick. He'll be a, he'll be a second or third round pick. He's that good. Isaiah Horton, if he turns pro, he's a stud. Sam Brown is a great receiver. Jacoby George, even though he's a he's mentally stupid with his dumbass penalties, he's a good. Re, he's a really good receiver. Miami has weapons, and Cam Ward made them look great. So now you're deciding. Do I want to put in a team that has a 24 to 3 loss to a bad Oklahoma team? Or am I going to put in a team in Miami who is 10 and 2, who has the number one offense in America, points and yards? And I know they're going to score. Now they may give up 40, but they're going to put up 40. They may lose the game, but you don't have to worry about them losing 24 to 3. You don't have to worry about their offense looking completely inept because it will never look inept. Even the game versus Georgia Tech, they scored 23 points. If Mario kicks two field goals <clears throat> and kicks an extra point, they have 30 points in a game that had eight total possessions. Remember that component. Georgia Tech ran the ball so much that Miami barely had a chance to do anything with it. They barely did anything with it. I think they scored on seven of their eight possessions or six of their eight possessions, something like that. They just didn't score touchdowns. They had, they had some, I mean, they had some field goals in there, I know, but they turned down two field goals. They turned down two field goals. But let's, let's be honest. Let's be honest. You're going to take a team that has a QB who's thrown for 15 touchdowns this year, Jalen Milrow sucks. He got he got he should have him not being able to turn pro last year is, is is this guy was a Heisman candidate. This guy has 15 touchdowns and 10 picks. That's trash. That's awful. That's awful. He had a worse year this year than he had last year. By far. He's garbage. The QB of South Carolina is mediocre. South Carolina lost to Alabama. I saw the game. They should have beat Alabama. Alabama celebrated that game like they won the Super Bowl that night, that, that day. It was an awful game. It's an awful game. Horribly coached game. Mental midgets on both sides of the ball. And what I mean by that is people that, like, not high IQ football. That's what I mean. It's not a high, high, high IQ football game because the mistakes that were made were unbelievably bad. <clears throat> but we're having this conversation now about whether Miami will get in over South Carolina or Alabama. The rest of the stuff is semantics, all right? I think SMU has to beat Clemson because if Clemson wins and ends up in that thing, I think SMU should be there. So I think that would eliminate Miami. That's my opinion. But then there's other people saying, well, if SMU loses, they're out. But that's see how dismissive of the ACC these people are? Is that SMU can dominate all year, have one, bad lo one loss by three to BYU, <clears throat> lose the ACC championship game. Now, if they were to get blown out, that's different. But let's say they lost a close game. I think they should still be in. 
And that's the disrespect. Penn State has no wins over anyone. Their only good team they played was Ohio State. They lost at home. They couldn't score. There's flaws with all of these teams. Every team, even Oregon, there's flaws. <clears throat> and I know Oregon's undefeated, but they have flaws. They didn't play Indiana. And I know Indiana got dog walked at, fr at freaking Ohio State. And we know when it happened. It happened when they botched that punt. They changed the whole game. One play can change an entire game. It can change the momentum of a game. Like the Restrepo fumble against Syracuse. But don't sit here and tell me that three lost South Carolina, which got beat by 24 by Ole Miss on their home field. Like, this is where I, I'm losing. Like, this is what bothers me. I know South Carolina just beat Clemson on the road. Good win. Clemson's not a world beater. They're a good team. It's a good win. I'm not criticizing the win. It's a good win. It took a fluky-ass interception to get it done because Clemson was right on the doorstep of scoring to win the game. A tip ball turns into a pick. <clears throat> South Carolina lost 27-3 at home to Ole Miss. 27-3. Why do they get away with getting blasted? Like, see, that's my problem. They have a win over Texas A&M. They got a win over Missouri. Missouri's a decent. They're nine and three. So why is Missouri's nine and three better than Syracuse's nine and three? Tell me why. Someone explain to me why Missouri. Let's look at Missouri's schedule. <clears throat> Missouri, they have a win over Boston College by six at home. They beat Texas A&M. They got. Smoked by Bama 34 0. And they lost to South Carolina by four. They don't have a win over a good team. Boston College is a mediocre ACC team. Boston College finished seven and five. But Boston College is seven and five, is not Georgia Tech seven and five. Those are different seven and fives. So why is it that they get away with not having any monster size win? Yet yeah, they got beat by 24. I mean, they, I'm sorry, that, that was Missouri. But they're like South Carolina's win is over Missouri, and that's like their big win. Yeah, they beat Clemson. But you can't lose by 24 points on your home field. My mean lose at 24 points. Anybody in their home field. My mean they lose a game this year on their home field. My mean lost two tough, close road games. That's what they lost. So they get, they get away with losing by 24, and Alabama gets away with losing by 21 to a 500 Oklahoma team and scored three points. So, yes, do I think Miami, based on merit, has earned a playoff spot? Yes, I do. Do I think they're done? Yes, I do. Because I think this committee will find a way to screw Miami over. And you can say that Miami screwed Miami over. Yeah, I, I wouldn't argue that. <clears throat> I would not argue that Miami screwed Miami over by losing two of their last three games. But why does Ohio State only drop six, five spots in the polls? Why does Ohio State lose at home to a 21-point underdog and only drop five spots in the polls? This bias is insane. Ohio State's biggest win is Penn State, and Penn State doesn't have a win over anybody. Yeah, they beat Indiana. That was a good win. That's their big. I'm sorry, that's their biggest win. To me, that's their biggest win. That's a bigger win than the win over Penn State because I don't think Penn State's that good. But I look at this from a perspective of we're sitting here. You want to have your most exciting games? There's not a chance, not a way in the world that the Miami Hurricanes do not belong in the college football playoffs. You want exciting football? The Hurricanes will give you exciting football. It might be 48 to 45, but they're going to give you exciting football, win or lose. And a matchup between them and potentially Notre Dame as a six seed? The storyline? 
Miami goes to South Bend to play Notre Dame? That would be epic. One can only hope that the committee on Tuesday will drop a more reasonable ranking than this garbage that the AP dropped today. To show, to, I mean, the AP has Miami at 14. The coaches have Miami at 14. I, I, Ohio State drops five on one and six in the other, losing to a 21 point underdog. I mean, that doesn't make sense. Miami loses by freaking four to a nine and three squad on the road and, and drops seven slots in six spots. We'll see what happens in the CFP rankings on Tuesday. But, man, the privilege of SEC schools is crazy. The privilege of SEC schools is crazy. And do I think Miami would beat Boise State? Absolutely. Yes. I think Miami would beat Boise State. Yes. But Boise State has earned their right. They've won their games. They're probably going to be the conference champ. What Miami needs to happen is that SMU wins. SMU has to win. If SMU wins, I'm going to worry about you don't have to worry about Clemson. Another win that Miami really would benefit Miami is Texas dog walking Georgia. That's what has to happen. Texas, if Texas dog walks Georgia, and now Georgia does a three loss team too, with their with their last two games being a two point win over Georgia Tech and a beat down by Texas, that also has an adjustment there because how do you keep a, a seventh rank or a sixth rank Georgia? in the top 12. That could come back to bite Georgia in the ass being in that game. It's a possibility. Indiana's done playing. SMU plays, obviously. Tennessee's done playing. Notre Dame is done playing. Penn State now plays Oregon. What if Oregon beats Penn State by 30? What do you say then? These championship games have meaning. Now, if Penn State wins, they're in. Oregon's still going to be in. If Oregon wins, Penn State still might be in. Ohio State has been gifted life. Don't know how they should. I, I, I don't know why Ohio State gets a gift for winning a, losing a 13-10 game to a 21-point dog on their home field. I can make a 1,000 arguments for Miami being in. And, yes, the one argument you'll bring back to me is their defense sucks. Yes, it sucks. It's the worst defense. It's an awful defense. Awful defense. But that awful defense held Florida to 17 points in Gainesville. In Gainesville. And at the end of the day, no one's ever stopped their offense. Not even Georgia Tech. 23 points. It should have been 30 if the coach decided to do what he's supposed to do. And yes, Miami has a deficiency in coaching. I mean, I can't argue that. Mark Cristobal is a horrendous coach. Horrible coach, game-wise. Great recruiter, can't coach a lick. End of the day, we'll see what happens on Tuesday. If Miami's ranked in the top 11, Miami will get in. Presuming Clemson, SMU beats Clemson. SMU beats Clemson. If SMU beats Clemson, and Miami's ranked in the top 11 on Tuesday, Miami will get in. Because I have to think that the excitement of Cam Ward and that offense anywhere is worth watching. It's worth watching. Now, coming from the perspective of if Miami does not get in, there's only one bowl game I want to see them play. And that's against Colorado. Colorado. That's who I would want them to play in the bowl game. That game would be in the 50s. That would be exciting football, presuming everyone comes to play. If Miami players don't want to play, then I'd rather not play a bowl game. But I'm telling you right now, if they get in, now another game that's a, that's that that's something that's going to create some potential headache is the um, Arizona State BYU game. I think Arizona State winning is very important for Miami because BYU is ranked 17th, Arizona State's ranked 12th right now. I think Arizona State winning that game is huge for Miami. So there's two games in particular. There's two, there's two major, well, three. Arizona State winning, SMU winning, and the third one is Texas dog walking Georgia. If those three things happen, 
I have a hard time, hard time seeing Miami behind a three-loss Georgia team, a three-loss Bama team, and a three-loss South Carolina. Like, that would be hard to stomach. But we'll see what happens. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. This is Rudy's Rant Facts. Where feelings. Be sure to like, subscribe, follow, hit that bell. Greatly appreciate y'all. You have a good one. Come on now.